So I wanted to make a couple of videos about how I used AnyRail to design my model railroad. So before we get into anything else, I want to show you what I did. And then after that, I'll talk about the series of videos and what you can expect from them. So right now we're looking at the basic AnyRail screen that you'll see when you open, but let me show you what I did here. Now I'd like to point out that I am terrible at designing railroads from scratch. Every railroad I've ever built has been from a published track plan. And then I've taken that track plan and modified it to do what I wanted it to do. This time around is no exception, so let me show you the track plan I decided on. This is the Red Rock Northern, and it's from the June 2007 issue of Model Railroader magazine. And it pretty much had everything I wanted in a railroad this time around. This time around for my Model Railroad, I wanted something easier. I wanted something that would be easy to construct, easy to scenic. But I wanted something that had a long main line run and had plenty of industry in it. It's going to be built low because I want my grandchildren to be able to run the railroad and enjoy it without having to stand on stools. Now this railroad as designed fits in a 9 by 11 foot room. And the room I'm going to be putting the railroad in is about 15 feet 10 inches by just a little over 10 feet. So what I'm going to do is take this design and put it into a drawing of my railroad room. And then I'm going to expand it horizontally and vertically, or in the XY dimensions, to fit the area that I have. So let me show you what it looks like when we get it into any rail. So here's my design that I did in any rail. And what we'll be doing later in this set of videos is we'll be showing you how to lay out your railroad space in pretty good detail. Because after all, you need to know how much room you have before you build your railroad. What you're looking at right now is the track I've laid down. This is pretty much a first run through this. I have a feeling uh, it's going to change. So let me turn on the original track plan. We'll go over here to layers and we'll explain all about layers later on. And I'm going to turn that on. And now you'll see the image of the Red Rock Northern. And as you can see, I've expanded it in the horizontal and vertical directions to fill the space in my room. Now in this design, I pushed the track over here because I had about a three foot square area here that wasn't being used. And I thought, ah, that might not be a bad idea. But as time goes on, I'm beginning to think I might go back to a more simpler plan. And as you can see, it's a twice around the room. It has some pretty good switching in it. It also has a staging yard. I'll talk about that in just a second. Some of the things I've changed in the first design is I did not include the yard nor the engine service facilities. My railroad is going to be based in the late 1970s to early 1980s, so I'm going to be uh, running four axle diesels, small trains, things like that. I didn't think I needed a yard. And besides, it opened up this area in here so I could add a little bit more of a town area. And another one of my not so brilliant ideas is I have a hallway here and I could build a 13 inch wide by nine foot extension down that way. And what I'm thinking of is scenic it, make it uh, like an industrial area, and then put bookcases underneath it. So in case I decide to do that, I dropped in a curve switch here as a placeholder. The original railroad had staging, but the staging was just two tracks, and you could bring a train in, in this direction or a train in, in this direction. I wanted something different, so I designed staging tracks that go all the way around the room. In fact, let's lose this and let's turn on the staging and you can see the staging. So the brown track here is the staging. And I can turn off this and that. And you get a better idea of the staging track. This line here, it represents the edge of the benchwork, but that's going to change. It's more of a placeholder just to outline where the benchwork might be. So that's pretty much my future railroad, but like I said, I think it's going to change. I think I may go back to something a little closer to the original plan here. It would make life a little simpler. It would also make construction a little simpler for me. So if you're still with me this far, let me tell you a little bit about the videos that are to follow. Now, first of all, I want to point out that I'm not an expert at any rail. I'm just somebody who found the program, really liked it, downloaded it, bought it, and then started playing around with it. And as I was playing around with it, I kept coming up with different questions. Now, I looked at some of the other CAD programs for designing model railroads, and they all seemed to have a very high learning curve, or I could never get them to do exactly what I wanted them to do. AnyRail does a lot of what I think a CAD program to do. It is missing quite a few things, and uh, I will mention them in the various videos, but so far I've been quite impressed with AnyRail. 
When I started playing around with it, there were a few things that popped up that I had questions on. And the manual is, well, the manual can be kind of iffy on its descriptions of things. I think the manual is a little bit behind the updated versions. I went to the AnyRail forums to answer a couple of questions, and I did find my answers there on some things and on other things I did not find the answers. Maybe I didn't look hard enough and they are there. I don't know. I looked on YouTube. I found a couple of videos that had been made on uh, using any rail to design uh, your track plan. I got a couple of tips from those videos, but again, they didn't always answer the questions and they didn't always seem to be complete. So I decided to make my own. Now, my videos may not answer all your questions and they may not be complete, but I pretty much cover everything that I thought was important for designing a railroad. My videos progress from the basic setup of any rail up to actually designing the room and inserting the image like you see here and then adding track to it. I'm not going to show you how to go and get any rail and download it. I figure if you're looking at these videos, you have probably already downloaded the demo version or actually bought it and have questions about it. So I'm going to skip all of that. I'm also working from the assumption that you have no CAD experience and this is your first time using a CAD program. And if it is your first time using a CAD program, some of the phrasing and the concepts can be a little hard to grasp at first. And I've tried to explain them as well as I can. Some of the videos might be a little long-winded, but I try to explain things in detail to help you along. If you have CAD experience, you can just skip over the areas that you already know. I tried to put the videos in some kind of logical order, but as I go back and edit and re-edit them, I realize eh, maybe I could have done a better job. Sometimes I repeat myself in videos, but I try to keep that to a minimum. Now there is one video that doesn't fit into the grand scheme of things. I call that video video number 42, track, lines, surfaces, and everything. And in there I describe some basic functions of the track menus, the lines menus, surfaces, inserting rectangles, inserting circles, things like that. So if you find these videos useful and you make it up to say video 4, I would go check out video 42. Video 42 explains some concepts in detail that I should have gone over in greater detail in the other videos, but I didn't. So I would recommend checking out video 42 somewhere, like I said, somewhere after video 4. Another thing I'd like to point out is I'm not a genius at math, and this is very, very evident in video 6a and 6b, so just bear with me. I sort of flail around with some math to try and get a curve to fit between an obtuse and an acute angle, and uh, for those of you who know a lot more about math than I do, it might be very amusing, but in the end, the way I did it did indeed work and has always seemed to work for me. Okay, enough explaining how I'm not an expert at any rail, and let's move on to video two, which is going to be the basic setup of the any rail editor.